So we're ready to make our next toggle. And as you can see in this one, the texture is created using a hand motion, which is done with carving. So it's kind of a free form look. And the toggle bar's got a nice twist to it. And to achieve the shape of both of these parts, we're gonna use an extruder. So let's take a little close up look at the extruder. This is an aluminum based extruder, which you can use with metal clay. Uh, my advice is just to not let the metal clay dry in the extruder, make sure you clean it out really well. And the dies we're using are the triangle and then the four small circles, which will make some nice thin ropes. Uh, one of the other things that I wanted to show you before we get started is how I came to the size ring that I needed. I figured out on the circle template what size ring worked for my design. And then because of the shrinkage that metal clay goes through in the firing process, I needed to account for that. Um, it's hard, for me, math is a challenge, so I needed to make a photocopy instead of doing math. Cheater. I increased the photocopy 10%, and that gave me the size that I will ultimately be working with so that after firing, the ring is back to the size that I wanted it to be at from the beginning. So with all those parts in place, we're ready to get started on this toggle. All right, so we have our template. I have a non-stick sheet on top of the circle that I know we want to work toward. And I have the extruder ready to go. So I'm going to fill the extruder with a significant amount of clay so that I'm sure to get exactly what I need in an extruded rope kind of into shape so it goes right into the extruder. And I have the triangle disc in there. There we go. And I will extrude the clay. So, and I like to do it this way so that the clay just falls out in one nice straight piece. And then I'll lay it down. I find when I do it in this direction, uh, I get ridges in it. So I like to just do it straight. Okay, and as I mentioned, you don't wanna let the clay dry in here. So I'm just gonna kinda cover the end and I'll deal with that as soon as we're finished because I want to deal with this clay while it's fresh. So I have my ring, I have the rope, and I'm going to bring the clay so that it fits the circle. I'm going to add a good amount of paste so that the seam is filled and actually so it's overfilled. You want to have excess and fill it in a little bit more on this side. All right, so you get that idea. We've created a nice seam. And you want to make this as round as you can. So one idea would be, I've treated the end of this paintbrush and I'm going to go inside the circle of the ring just to kind of help stretch it out a little and make it so it's a nice, neat circle there. Okay, and I don't want to mess with it too much. I want to let it set up and do what it needs to do. So I'm going to put this aside to dry and then we'll readdress the seam as well as moving on to the next step. For the toggle bar, we're going to use the extruder again. And this time I've loaded the die with the four little circles. So I'm gonna make four skinny ropes of clay. So I'll just extrude them. And again, I like to hold it up straight above the work surface, just so I have half a chance of them coming out straight and then being able to control them. So I'm going to lay that down carefully so I have control as best as I can and trim that off. Okay, so I've got four pretty ropes of clay and what I'm gonna do is pull this hand toward me and push this hand away from me and hold down the Teflon sheet and twist. And again, you want to have your toggle bar be long enough to span the distance across your toggle ring. So I'm just going to trim the ends and leave it about that long. 
so now I'll just keep that as straight as I can get it and set it aside to dry and then we'll add the loops. The toggle ring and toggle bar are dry. They are ready for some additional work. So what I want to show you here is that the toggle ring does in fact have a little bit of a gap at the seam. You can see it right there. So what I want to do to fix that is just add a tiny bit of water in all the areas and now we'll add some some filler. We'll put some paste there. And you want to do uh, an excessive amount. Not well. Here I'll show you. There we go. And then I'm gonna clean off the paintbrush. Close up the paste. You'll let that dry. And for the sake of demonstrating that, we'll move to this area that is dry. And here you can see there's a couple little gaps and that came from uh, when I bent the clay around and kind of stretched it, it, it created these little, little divots. And we'll just clean that up and then we'll use the polishing papers and I'll go through starting with the 400 grit and this is to polish it and get the clay as perfect as you can get it. And I'll go through all the grits so it's perfectly smooth and polished. And as well as we'll make sure I address the underside so it's also ready to go. Then I will do the same thing with the toggle bar. I'll go over the entire bar. And here I'm not going to use the sanding board because that'll flatten out some of those nice curves that you have that you created. All right, so I will continue to do that through all of the grits just like I did with the ring. Then once the ring is completely perfect. I will take a piece of the vet trap and put that around my finger. This is going to be to protect my finger from when I'm carving and it'll also help stabilize the piece against my finger so it doesn't move while I carve. And I've took a pencil. Metal clay really receives uh, graphite very well. And you just draw. Here I'll make a mark that doesn't exist yet. Just so you can see it's really very easy to make a line using a pencil. It just gives you a good guide to work with so you know what you're at least working toward. So with the carving tools uh, what I have here is a V shape and a U shape and I'll use each of those one on the inside and one on the outside. Okay so I'm going to find a good comfortable place and just start carving and just move it along carefully. And you can see these nice little cute coils that form like little snail shells depending on how how well you carve from one fluid motion and you can certainly go back in and carve it to be deeper. You don't want to go too deep that you wind up on the other side so just kind of keep your design in mind and the depth of your piece in mind as you plot things out. And then to do it on the outside, you can hold it this way. Um, my concern is always to take this and push too hard and collapse it on itself. So if you just keep that in mind, you'll be fine. And feel free to um, practice this. You can bake up some polymer clay and practice this before you start working on your metal clay. Okay, so those tools work very nicely with the metal clay. It also creates these really cool squiggly guys and I would recommend saving them and using them in another project. Continue that all the way around and once you're done with that, it's time to add the loops. To make the loops that we put on the toggle that we can then use to hang the toggle from, we need to make a coil. I'll take some fresh clay and place it onto the work surface. I'll get it into the general shape of kind of like a little bit of a log. And with a clean bead roller, I will put downward pressure on the bead roller and do my best to make the pressure even. 
so that the rope of clay that I'm creating is consistent all the way across. So I'll anchor the rope of clay to a straw and then just wind the straw with the clay, trying to keep the, the rings of clay fairly straight. And I'll set it aside to dry. With the coil already dried, I'll remove it from the straw. And as it shrinks, it does kind of grasp onto the straw, so you will have to pull on that gently so that it can be released. And using the rubber block and the clay blade with the safety guard on it, I will cut the rings apart. and create those rings. And then from here, I will cut the ring, not quite in half, almost so I have two thirds of a ring left to create a nice loop. And I'll do that twice and trying to make them both the same size. And we will get them ready for assembly onto our pieces. I'm going to take the cut loop and go across the sanding board, keeping it as flat as I can so that I create a good stable surface for attaching. And now on my ring, I'll determine where I want to put my loop if there's any area in here on particular that maybe I want to hide, if I, my carving skills weren't quite up to snuff, I'll put a little bit of water on that area. And that just kind of helps wake the clay up a little bit. And then I'll take the paste and my tweezers. And you could just dunk this right into the paste, but I'm going to show you this way and find that area where I put the water and place the ring. So between the water, the paste, and a little bit of pressure, that'll help make that join. You may need to go back in and fill it once the paste has dried and you would just use the paintbrush and fill in any of those gaps. And we would do the same thing with the toggle bar same exact way. And because of the twist in this, you'll just want to find the points where your loop isn't resting in one of the crevices between the twist. So again, you're just going to dip this in, put a little bit of water on that area where the pencil marks are, and dip this into the paste. And this will probably wind up on a little bit of an angle this is where you want to keep the loops straight so you have a good straight up and down loop. And because of the twist, it's going to want to be a little bit cockeyed. And that will work. It's not a design hindrance in any way. And once you get it set, see it already wants to stick. So you're in good shape. We'll let that dry. And again, if you need to, we can just fill it back in later and because we've refined the toggle bar and the ring already, this will be the only area you have to worry about before you're ready to fire. Once you get that all primed and ready to go, you can place this in the kiln and fire it. And once it's at room temperature, we'll work on finishing. The toggle, ring, and bar are now out of the kiln and cooled to room temperature. So we're going to finish them. And because of the texture, and I wanna um, make sure I get into all the grooves, I'm gonna start with the steel wire brush and just brush across the surface and bring up that shine. For additional shine, if you really want to go to the next level, you can put this in a tumbler or explore the other techniques in the fundamental section. Lots of different options, as well as adding a patina. 
once you get this technique down, there's lots of ways that you can go with creating toggles for that next stringing design you have on your table.